So a bit of a different video for you today. I decided that I wanted to put a radio frequency ID door lock on the door of my studio. So I hunted around on eBay and I bought myself one of these, a Conexus L1 from Yale. Now, I'm not gonna do an installation video or an unboxing video because that's not my style and reality. Uh, there's lots of those available on the internet and you can click on links below or above or wherever the heck I put them. However, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna install it on the door that's just over there and then I'm gonna see, can you break it? Well, hold it there. When I started this video, I intended to install this lock on that door, but something told me that installing an electronic lock and one that I intended to play with on the only ingress and egress point for the building would be a fundamentally bad idea. So I went back to the good old fashioned key lock on the door and built this magnificent door analog. Now, for those of you who have any woodworking skills, I suggest that you look away now as the rest of this video may contain some disturbing images. And one thing I would like to say is that I now have a huge amount more respect for people who do rebating of locks into doors. So where have I gotten to with this lock? Well, I can completely read the cards and I can dump the cards. Now, I don't have the right kind of blank card to be able to copy the card onto, and due to Brexit and custom charges, I can't get one easily. But I can use the emulated card to open the door, or I can clone it to the chameleon and use that to open the lock. And that's where it gets very interesting. Because if I use the chameleon to emulate the real card, one would presume that both the chameleon and the real card would now work to open the door lock. However, as I'm about to demonstrate, once I've opened the door with the card emulated on the chameleon, the genuine RFID card provided by Yale now doesn't work. So what's happening here? Is it a vulnerability? Is it a security feature? Well, it's a bit of both. The lock writes to one of two blocks on the card every time the lock actuates. And what I mean by this, that every time the lock either opens or closes, it writes a value to block 16 or to block 17. Now, the analysis I've done here is not complete and I still have a way to go to figure out why it writes to these blocks and if it's sequential, or if there's another pattern. All I know is that every time the lock opens or closes, a value is written to the first few bytes of block 16 or block 17, seems to be in sequential order, and if you copy those blocks, back from your chameleon, back to the card, the card starts to work again. Now, as to if it's a vulnerability, I suspect that this has been implemented to stop people from cloning door cards. If I clone a card, only the last card to be used, which can be the clone, will work, as only it will have the correct sequence number in block 16 or block 17. However, I do believe the lock should have been designed to declare a primary key, which whilst the lock may complain it's being cloned, should always work. At the moment, if I clone your card and then I use my clone, your card will stop working until you do a full factory reset. So let's do a quick demonstration to show opening the lock after making a very quick clone of the key. Now you've noticed that I will not redact anything on my screen and that's because I won't be using this particular lock or these particular keys to secure any door that I care about. And it's not to say I don't trust this lock, but this lock will forever be a demonstration unit. Now, I'm not going to show all of the steps on my screen, especially when I've covered them in previous videos, such as how to copy the card, how to copy the binary onto the chameleon. I've got other videos in the channel and where I go into this in a lot of detail. There just isn't time in this video to cover all of those detailed steps. I'll try and put some links down in the description and if you get stuck or you want some extra information, please drop me a message down below in the comments. So this lock I've installed in this piece of old table um, and I have set it up so this is the front, this is the outside of the door lock and the, uh, the rear of the door lock is, is here. There's nothing exciting here. Um, if I were to lift the handle, 
you can see the lock locks and you get a little flashing red light over there and you get a beep, beep, beep uh, uh, to indicate it is locked. Now I've got two kinds of uh, token here. I've got this uh, card and I've got this um, uh, little fob. And if I do an HF um, search, you'll see that both of them come up as exactly the same thing uh, as a simple uh, MyFair Classic 1K uh, with a weak um, uh, pseudo um, random number generation. So uh, that's all nice for copying the card. And they're basically exactly the same. And if I use the uh, card, I simply put it here and the lock unlocks. And now I can unlock the lock. Now, this is a little Yale fob and I have configured this to be set up. So what I've done is I have essentially done an uh, HFMF auto and we'll just let that run through. Uh, and I have uh, copied and broken the encryption on this little Yale fob and I've also done it on this one. And it's just gonna zip through and we'll just see it going over here somewhere and it's just going through, there it's got the keys and there it has, there it's actually dropped and dumped the key. Now, I have now taken that dump and I've put it onto this chameleon card. Now, I will just demonstrate to you to show if I can get it to stay on the right one, onto slot eight. If I go onto slot eight on this card, which is where this token has been saved, I can now go over to here and the chameleon doesn't have the, be uh, the best antenna compared to the actual real tags. Come on, you know you want to do it, you're on. Let's come back in again. There we are, it locked. Now, what is interesting there, if I come in with the real tag and come in with the real tag, what happens? It gives me an error to say this tag isn't actually recognized. However, if I now go on to this particular tag, let's, put, let's, let's just put my chameleon on my Proxmark, as you can see it just here on the table and I do an HF uh, MF auto, and I'm just going to dump that particular tag. I didn't want to do that actually. And the reason why I didn't want to do that, and the reason why I'm about to stop this, is because the emulated tag doesn't have weak random number generation, which means it's an awful lot easier to crack this tag than it is to crack the tag that's copied onto there. So I'm actually going to stop that because otherwise this is going to take a lot of time. There we are, I've actually stopped that. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to dump the tag using the existing keys. So I've already, because I've, because I've dumped that tag, I have the keys for all the sectors of that particular tag. So therefore, if I then dump this tag again, it will be using the same keys because they're not changing the keys. So if I go to dump the tag, reading the sector bits, it's now just dumping all of the sector bits. So this is this tag from this. There we are, so now what I've just done is I've dumped this tag onto the file key8.bin.7.json. Now, if I run a very, very, very quick diff command in another terminal, which actually helps if I'm actually on, uh, oh, where are we? I need my command, I think it's, uh, uh, just get the, the keys up. I want to do the JSON. So if I do uh, uh, diff minus S minus capital W 70, and then I'll just do the file that I just literally created, which is this file here. Now I'm going to use the JSON files because I want the actual text. I want the content of the, um, uh, of the, I want the content of the um, 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 uh, of the, the, the data structures. Um, if I do that one and I compare it against, uh, let's say this one, which is the uh, dump ten. All I'm looking to show you is so these are two dumps of the of the same key essentially, just 
one before I've done and one just after I've actuated the lock. And we will see something very interesting. There we are. We can see on screen that the only differences between the two files are the data that's been written into line 16 and line 17. So, if this key works, and we know this key works, because I just this is the one I just used, and this key doesn't work, how to make this key work? Well, if I now copy line 16 and 17 from this key and copy them on, sorry, sector, uh, um, um, sector, block, block 16 and 17 from this key, from slot eight on this key, and put them back on this key, this key will magically work because the lock will believe that this key becomes this one, which was the last one to open it. It does make sense, just watch it back again. So let's run that one more time. So go back to my Proxmark screen. And if I then read block 16, and remember, so all I've got here is HFMF read block 16, and I'm gonna use the B key, which is all Fs, because there's not much in, and even if they did have a real key there, we've already got the keys, but it is all Fs. So if I then do that, oops, the reason why it couldn't select the card is because obviously the chameleon turns off. So let's just make sure it is on. I need to adjust the timeouts on that one. There we are. We've now got the key, the data for the 16 B, uh, 16 uh, uh, sector. If I do 17 as well, and I've got 17 as well. So I now have 16 and 17. Let's make this key work again. If I go now into a right block, and I'm gonna do number 16. So number 16 was this one here, starting 69B5. If I copy that, paste that in, and then take out all the spaces, Okay, so this is number 16 I'm about to put in. Okay, num okay. If I now take number 17, which is the one starting 47B, uh, 3B, and I wanna write this into block 17. I have a need to have a better way of taking out all the spaces. That's written block 16 and block 17, which were from this key back in. Now remember this key didn't work? Well, hey presto, it now works. And more interestingly, because the lock is now written to block 16 and 17, the next sequence number, whatever that sequence number is, if I now go back to this one and put it back on slot eight, it doesn't work. Whereas this one does. And that would allow me to lock the lock. So that's it for the moment. This has been quite a frustrating lock, but it's been quite a satisfying project and it isn't even over yet. The main question that you might have is, would I put this lock on my front door? And to be honest, I probably would. Let's be very clear. Most burglars are opportunist, and they're not going to take the time to learn how to use radio frequency ID equipment. If someone can learn to clone these keys, then they can learn to pick a lock. But that being said, I wouldn't deploy any electronic lock from any manufacturer on a single doored building. However, there is the issue that if I can emulate your key, then I can make the lock not respond to your genuine key. And if you don't have any backup keys or don't have access to a mobile phone app, then you're going to be locked out and you'll be having to use an alternative ingress point to get in. In the future, I'm going to work out why and what it writes to each block of the card. Now, if you've already researched this lock and already know why, please let me know either in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter. I've only scratched the surface on the lock and I think there's a lot more to find out. I'd like to say thanks to the lovely, wonderful people on the RFID Discord channel, as well as people like Iceman. 
without whose sage advice this video would not have been possible. So if you've got any comments about this video or you've got any ideas of what I should create next, please put a comment down below in the comments. You'll see I do read all the comments and I re react and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. And I do create videos based upon your feedback. So until the next video, have fun, don't hack anything you shouldn't, and keep learning.